Hi, I'm David from Shop Blast Media and today we're going to take an in-depth behind the scenes look at our latest health and safety video film for RWE Generation. Mission Zero, Be The One is the name of the RWE Generation program that will help them take the next steps to improving their safety performance. The story involved using a mix of real people and actors at RWE locations. The actors were required to play out key safety scenarios, including a hard-hitting accident in a workshop. The whole project had a short six-week turnaround from script to screen. The three weeks of pre-production involved collaboration with the RWE team to develop the script, cast all the acting roles, organise all the shooting dates, the locations, the crew, costumes, PPE, props and many more. Four days of filming took place at their sites in Didcot, Swindon and Stayford. Let's take a look. Okay Byron, so here we go. This was day one. So the first day, yeah, we had to go around to shoot all these GVs, which found some interesting angles here. That's the one we did the waterfall one. Oh yeah, the waterfall one where you come out. A, that was a good one. But, so what we're doing here then, David? What's all this? Uh, so the idea here was we got various people around the different sites, whether they're working the office, the management, contractors, or, or whoever, drivers, to hold up these boards, green screen boards, so then in the edit we could put on these certain messages of all the key points from Mission Zero B to One. Movement on the gimbal, we shoot one where the camera is still, once we move left to right. So we kind of created this format of, we'll shoot everyone in kind of three different styles. So yeah, the boards had five different markers, see in the corner in the middle. So it would help the visual effects guys in our team to kind of track onto it, especially when there's movement, moving backwards or forwards, because there's there a perspective change. So Alex is all set up on the gimbal, ready to, uh, ready to shoot these green boards. Gareth is over there, got Peter. David is currently over there doing his directing and making sure that everyone's in the right spot. So one of the key things that we thought of to create a transition from the beginning of film where there's just people holding boards into our actor's story, which is all kind of scripted and more like a short story or a drama. So our idea was we have two guys holding up some messages and then our main actor, our hero, played by Peter, kind of walks behind them. So that's the way we've got the two worlds collide. The story carries on following Peter as he goes into into the building and into the changing room. So and David edited the uh, the borders to make the aspect ratio. There we go, this is Alex with his trolley. Now in a minute, you'll see him drop it. There you go, he had enough. Walks away. Was that, that's <laughs> what you and Tom were there for, in existence? <laughs> That's it. One of the key things to this film is the four pillars. They're kind of four main safety points. So this one was Don't Walk On By, and it was filmed, as you can see, on top of a scaffolding on a very windy day. And getting the kit up there was quite a challenge. You had to climb up this little ladder. With a lens, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so this was one of the first things that we actually did. This is me taping up a light. Because if you have a light directly above the actor, you're going to cause a lot of shadows. So. That needed to be taken care of. And also remember there was lots of name badges. Yeah. So Tom had to go around, see his little <laughs> behind Byron there, there's little black bits of tape and that was, Tom had to go around and cover people's names up yeah. in case you identified anyone. We kind of stood in to block out where, where Mark was going to stand and then where Peter was going to sit. There we go, so the actors are, are in now. So yeah. them trophies behind are actually Little secret, they're actually golf trophies. They are. The it's from our corporate golf day last year, which there was nearest the pin, but no one got nearest the pin, so. <laughs> Kept but, the trophy. But we never get a close up of these trophies, no. so no. it works fine from here. You would not have known that. <laughs> See Matt in the background, he's our, he was our sound man. So all the sound is recorded separate, different device to what the camera is on. So it's that's a couple board to help sync that up. Here's me, look, just for my script. Got some headphones so I can hear what the actors are saying. Look very official, don't you? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh, this is where we move around. This is just kind of close up on Peter. You can just about see him in camera monitor there. Yeah. With Gareth in the background. So Gareth is the um, the client, the, the big producer. Yep. Very nice guy. Executive producer, not, Executive. not sexy producer, is Peter Fuller. <laughs> I said when I introduced him. 
Yeah, so once we're done in the locker room, what, maybe two hours in there total to yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah, came back up. We moved into the uh, the workshop for our recreation of the accident. We had to use someone who works on site, who's all qualified, hasn't got the right kit on. We had Martin here be the double for Mark. And so obviously we're filming him from, see this angle, and he's got the PP on. There's no way you could tell, and they're similar body shapes and sizes. So this bit here, before, before he slips and the accident happens, and he does a really good job actually because he, he, he slipped himself, didn't he? Like, he really did. Like on purpose, he didn't actually slip, but we had a very good stunt double. And yeah, we filmed that all in slow motion, 50p, which is half, you can slow it down to half the speed, which looks really, really nice. So this is when we started doing the prosthetics. Now this this was very good, what we found. Yes, yeah, so this, this is Jane, fantastic special effects makeup person. <laughs> so how did you prepare this and make this? Uh, this, this is a bought piece. I had a look through my moulds to see if I had anything that would fit. Um, yeah. And I had nothing, everything was too shredded looking because we want oh. a bit of a clean slice. Yeah. So I bought a couple pieces from them so we can see what works on the day. Yeah. Yeah. Because as you said, it's kind of a quick, he's kind of just slipped and it's gone, gone in. Yeah, it's quite and a it's clean. It's not like one up higher and it's just in one yeah, day, it's, it's not a and then out. It's not a tool that grabs and shreds. Oh, so yeah, yeah. so like, yeah, yeah, it's quite a nice clean. So we've gone for a gelatin piece. I'm going to give it a quick clean before he comes back. Something like this should be able to do it in about 20 minutes, about that. Um, but prosthetics, it can take anything up to four, five, six hours, depending on what's needed. Here you go. You can, you can see how deep yeah, it is there. there Look at the textures in there. Look how it's gone from that that baggy prosthetic to now it's it's all blending in and it's it's looking great mark the actor really wanted to go into mcdonald's with with it like on his hand and see how that goes but didn't do it, did, I it? did not know that brilliant <laughs> yeah he was saying he wanted to go into mcdonald's and just order something and pick up the cook with a prosthetic on his hand and just have all the blood dripping <laughs> see what they think to that, I think. And we can always add more on set. Yeah, absolutely. That looks amazing. <laughs> That's definitely get to hospital now material, isn't it? <laughs> so we had Martin earlier on as a stunt double with the grinding. The next shot is, is Mark turning around. So you'll notice we went handheld with this scene, took it off the tripod and the gimbal, and it worked really well, I think. Yeah, because we'd been on the tripod on a very steady gimbal so far, and just to make a very contrasted style of, of filming it, more handheld, more frenetic, more realistic, as if someone was there with a the camera and they were shooting mm -hmm. it. So as you can see here where Mark will spin around, look, that could be Martin easily. So that worked really, really well. And what would you say about Mark, his performance here? Oh yeah, you'll, you'll notice, obviously, it was a lot of close-ups, a lot of wide shots of it, and it's, it's brilliant. I think his scream was so realistic that <laughs> in the other room there was a meeting with a bunch of really, how would you explain them, with a bunch of colleagues there and his performance was that good that they was basically saying, is, everyone, is everything okay, is everyone alright? Because um, they didn't realise what was going on. Take three, shot 12, take three. Can we have some help oh, here? Oh. Oh, what have you done? Oh. 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 Hello, control room. Can I get a first aider in the world now, please? Someone's got a hand. So we filmed it kind of following being with Mark, the main actor, him and looking at the injury. And then this, and then we also filmed it again, but we're kind of this time with Peter, a kind of hero. So when he walks over and he calls for extra help. And we actually had, he was, he's not an actor, the guy that comes in with the radio. He's someone that actually works there. Um, so I think he did quite a good job too. You know, he wasn't even an actor. Yeah. I had the idea of just, let's just pull away the camera just to pull back, other people have come in, it's Gareth playing an extra. And this... We just pull away and kind of fade to black. Because we don't see, you don't need to see what happens yeah. next. It's just left with this really hard hitting 
accident and lots of people rushing in to help. So let's. And this made it, didn't it? This, this made the final cut. Yeah, it did so a few takes. I mean, Gareth ran in. I'm sure he says, keep calm, keep calm. But sorry, Gareth, we uh, <laughs> cut that bit of audio out. Here we go. Looks like he nearly tripped there. Yeah, but... I love Gareth's run because he had to, he had to kind of move he had out to of the way around, for the yeah. machine. <laughs> so we had a large house Airbnb that we all stayed at because we had to travel to the location, but it also doubled as our secondary filming location. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, there he is, <laughs> hiding in there. So you'll see in the final edit that the uh, trees are quite well lit and Tom is out there lighting the trees to give it some depth. So there's a picture next to him there with just the rules for the Airbnb, but we, in editing process, changed that to a picture of, of Mark and his sons. Mm -hmm. So kind of show that he's been injured, he plays squash with them, he can't do it anymore. We had to all have some food, so I volunteered to cook for everybody. This is me chopping some onions. Now in the background, <laughs> we're setting up for our next scene. So you'll see that while I was cut, cutting onions, you'll see in the background there was actually a real shoot going on, and we, we used some of that, didn't we? In the, yeah, Alex, in the he's, he's, he spotted something about how you were cutting your onions. He's giving you a little chopping lesson here. Yeah, Alex, Alex used to work here as a chef before a camera operator. What? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, a junior chef. So here we got Matt, our sound recordist. He created this little voiceover booth in one of the bedrooms. Here, so we've got the actors, when they'd finished, we went upstairs and we kind of recorded these lines because we had kind of voiceover narration to go in a few spots. So this is later on after the accidents happened in the workshop and he's thinking, you know, I should have done something really. Got a nice big kitchen here, so a lot of depth. There's a really big clock on the wall behind him, so we took that off because we knew in the editing we were going to put some text behind him, so we needed a clean bit of space to one side of him. So this is kind of the next dramatised scene where again we've got our hero Peter, but this time there's another character, an RWE worker, where instead of just leaving it, Peter spots he's doing something wrong, our hero, and goes over with some sort of intervention to try and stop another accident happening. So with this one, we couldn't get that much B BTS really because Tom, the uh, work experience guy that was doing it with us, um, he had to hold the light throughout it all. Pretty much the ones that we've got here. <laughs> yeah, the ones lighting us right now. Yeah, the ones lighting us. So yeah, overall this was four days of filming at three different sites. We had casting crew of what, 12 of us or total. Yeah. Uh, and we had other people again doing the, the visual effects stuff on all the boards. Lottie's not in this, who did a lot of uh, also producing. We had a lot of RWE team that we had various calls and meetings with leading up to it. We had Maddie helping find our actors. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a big, you know, maybe up to 18, 20 people involved. Yeah. So there you go, you've learned about our camera team, sound team, makeup team, everything you can possibly think of that's gone into this RWE shoot. So thank you very much for watching.